Check this out here. Mm. We're going to give these one little stir. You can see how it really thickens up. And then the non-stick, boom, easy to clean. Let's throw the mullet in. Let's throw, come on, the mullet in. Bink! What's up everybody, Blue Game? We're in Jupiter, we're done with the snakes, done with the lizards, and it's time to catch snook, jacks, uh, toadies. What you want to catch, Luke? Um, a snapper. A snapper, we got Seth McGinn. All you guys that like those seasonings that I use, the butter garlic and the Creole and the original. Seth's running the camera right now. We got his boy Gunner here, we got Jake. But y'all watch this. Watch how much bait I get in one throw. Guess what? We got him. Guess what? We got him. We got bait, Jake and Luke. Oh, you got him. Oh, you got him. Y'all know what we call these? <laughs> Snook and Jack candies. All right, y'all, put them in the bay well. They look like giant balls. Get them, grab them, grab them, grab them, grab them. Grab them. Grab them. Grab them. Grab them. Whoa! Whoa. Hey. hey, go. Good job, Luke. You got two. Is that fun? We already caught some fish, huh? All right, we got bait. Now let's see if we can get fish. All right, y'all, we're here in Jupiter, the Lachachi River. Right now, the tide's dead slack. We've got bait, but these big snook are destroying mullet inside this big uh, mangrove island. So while we're waiting on them to bite, I'm gonna jump in, swim over there, and show y'all what it looks like inside there with thousands of finger mullet and big snook. Once this tide starts kicking out, then we're gonna put the bait in the water and start fishing. All right, y'all, here we go. I'm sure the kids gonna see my dad. Dad, be careful! So the big ones have been biting in there. Let's get in there and see if we can find them. Oh my goodness! All right, y'all, so this is the this will be the rig we're using. 50 pound test, three foot to a blood knot, to a loop knot on a J hook and a live mullet. Just as simple as it gets. Pitching it out there. Now this kind of fishing can be crazy hard because there's thousands of other mullet out there. Got our first snook. A whopper. How do you think this would feel if you hit it? We could make, we could mount. We could put something on that. Look at there. Hey, it's a start. The tide's just getting ready to start pushing out. The boys are up front trying to catch toadies. And the grown-ups are in the back catching snooks. What do you got on there? A big one. Oh, fish sticks tonight for supper. I love fish sticks. <laughs> We're wrecking them. All right, y'all, we've been trying to catch a snook for like an hour now. The tide switch. I've caught one little one. We can't catch any big ones. Come up here, Seth, and show them these mullet. Who thinks that I should take some of these mullet home, 
scale them and fry them whole. Zoom in and show them the mullet. All right, I want y'all to leave a comment below if you've ever been after a targeted species and ended up eating your bait. That's, I'm pretty sure, that's what we're gonna eat is bait tonight. But Uncle Aubrey, Aubrey Arrington, my older brother, caught some lobster yesterday, so we're gonna swing by and get them. That way we know we have something good to eat and I can show y'all some, something good to cook, but we're catching these mullet and cooking them. Do what, bud? What the water is that? What'd you say? <laughs> I did it in the first where the water is at. What are you gonna catch? I'm gonna catch a tilapia to eat because they're good. A tilapia. What are we gonna eat it? For we're dinner? Gonna, we're gonna cook it for dinner on the stove. All right, y'all, we're headed in. It's rough, it's storming. There's actually a pretty bad tropical storm hitting North Florida right now and we're getting effects from it. We've been fishing. We're going back to cook fried and smoked mullet. But we got Seth McGinn, the owner of Can Cooker, who makes my awesome seasonings that I use in my video. Hey, he's gonna cook his signature dish, ribs, in an hour in a can cooker. That's right, in a can. Like, I don't know how he's gonna do it, in a can. So if you like to eat food and you like to eat good ribs, don't go anywhere, because it's coming soon. We'll see y'all at the house. All right, y'all, we're in the kitchen. What you gonna cook? Cooking with Gabe. <laughs> you guys, I never get to cook with him. But look, that, he's about to cook an appetizer. Let me show you the main course. That's right, we're about to cook the bait. We're cooking mullet. PK from Rhoda's been wanting to see us cook mullet. We're cooking mullet. Gabe's saying bait night tonight. Yeah, so we're gonna night. do the bait. Shoot, if we're using the mullet, we, the kids were using shrimp. I said, let's fry some of those up too. I mean, who doesn't like shrimp? I brought the shrimp. We're gonna cook the bait shrimp too. But first, he's gonna show y'all how to cook the best ribs ever in an hour in a can. So Gabe's gonna do his deal. I'm gonna do mine in a can cooker. I'm gonna take some ribs. We had them just saw them in half. That way the kids can eat them. So what we're gonna do is cut in between each bone. Just make little appetizers out of them pork ribs. So I'll cut these up right in between the bone. Super simple. We're gonna put them in the can cooker. The one we just blue gabe -anized. Right just there. just blue gabe -anized my can cooker, y'all, on my brand new cutting board. But I'm still not cutting on it because I don't want to ruin it yet. Yeah, it's a show board, not a cutting board. Hey, and don't forget, big shout out to Aubrey, my brother. Big bag of fresh lobster. We're going to fry them too. We're going to eat fried lobster, can cooker ribs, the shrimp, the mullet. Probably even have some more. So y'all won't go anywhere. This is about to go down. So what we just did is took them ribs, sliced them in between so they'll be nice little bite-sized pieces when we're ready to eat them. So we're gonna throw all these in here. What was that, about two pounds of pork ribs? Just throw them right in there. So slick, in about an hour they're done. You don't have to flip them, turn them, shake them, nothing. Bring it over to the stove, put it on here. We'll go to about medium, medium low. We're gonna take a cup of red wine. It adds great flavor to pork, chicken. It's phenomenal. And about a cup of soy sauce. I know this is a little bit less, but about a cup. That's it. We're going to put that in there. Smell that and tell me that don't smell Now you got to tell my audience to smell it. Y'all smell that. Are you not going to put any seasoning on it? What do you what? want? A little all purpose? Yeah, I, I didn't know this was your favorite. Creole is my favorite and then butter garlic. Now they need to smell it. All right, so that's it. That's it. Is that heating up? Yep, boom. Put it right on there. Throw the lid on. If you want, you can latch the lid in the house. I don't, but whatever. That's it. Once it starts steaming, 20 minutes. Then we're going to open it up, dump in a cup of sugar, remove the lid, allow all that steam to steam off. That will reduce and turn into our barbecue sauce. So we'll be eating these in about one hour. All right, now it's time for me to take over. Say he's a chef, but I'm a master chef. It's time to clean the mullet. Let's go outside and clean these mullet. All right, y'all, so we got some bait. These are just plain old finger mullet. Big shout out to PK from Rhoda. He's like, why do y'all throw mullet out? Hey, we couldn't catch very many snook. We couldn't catch very much of anything but mullet. So I said, I'm gonna scale them, gut them, and fry them whole. But my buddy Seth just come out with an awesome new invention, and let's see what it is. A bucket board. So you fit it right inside your bucket, five, six gallon. It's got a groove on the inside. So you unfold it, throw it right on there. It's completely sturdy. Got a little knife holder right there. Perfect for ice fish in the boat. Whether you're wanting to cut bait, do whatever, or say you're flaying some small fish, you can put your guts right back in there. Cool little juice ring, 
to where all your juice will flow back right inside the bucket. When you're done, fill it up with soap and water and wash it right inside that bucket. All right, so all I'm doing is knocking the scales off. I'm not gonna cook their heads. I'm gonna cut their heads off too. Can't believe we're gonna eat bait tonight. It's gonna be good too. All right, so all I'm gonna do is cut his head off. Come right here, gut him. That's it, just a little quick sliver. Now, because we have so much to show y'all, that's all I'm gonna do. So he's simple. Scaled him, gutted him, cut his head off. We'll see y'all in the kitchen. All right, y'all, we got the mullet cleaned. Look at that, look at that. Look at these lobsters. Big shout out to my brother, Aubrey. Ooh, yeah. If you could smell that, Gunner, does that smell good? Yeah. So now we're gonna take the lid off, add about a cup of sugar. What this is gonna do is caramelize and be our sauce. So you see all this steam coming out? I don't know if you all can see that. So here in about 20, 30 minutes, that'll reduce down, caramelize, and be our barbecue sauce. And we made them little bite-sized pieces. It's great for an appetizer for the kids. You don't get that barbecue sauce all over your face. It's good. What about this, though? What about that? So, what about these? Yeah, Redneck. <laughs> Look at Redneck patiently waiting. Y'all, in case you haven't noticed, we're about to throw it down on that kitchen table right over there. It's going to be so good. I even got some garlic bread ready for the boys. What are we gonna do with the lobsters? We're frying everything. This is gonna be like that fried platter at Red Lobster. We're frying everything. Mullet, shrimp, lobsters, everything. Look at this new product. So y'all are probably thinking right now I'm running an infra commercial. We're not. But it ain't every day that you get Seth McGinn to cook in your kitchen, so he brought out all the new gadgets. Show us what you got. Original collapsible batter bowl. We were supposed to fry some gator. Things got rough. Whatever, we're gonna do some fried mullet. What do you mean things got rough? I killed a 12-1 by myself. How big was y'all's? Which one? Seven. Which one? Both of them. Just for the record, I killed a 12-1 by myself. Y'all saw it. Those of y'all that follow me on Instagram, killed a 12-1 by myself on Instagram Live and beat him and deer meat. Him and deer meat, they, they killed one like a little 11-7. Okay, let's go back last year. That we're not talking, last year is last year. This is this year. But I had to listen can to you go it back for on your, a year. We'll can you go back on your taxes from last year? No, you can't. Last year's taxes were last year's taxes. All right. Anyways, congratulations. You killed a heck of a gator Thank you. all by yourself, honestly. I got a pack of cookies to celebrate now. Show us what you're talking about. Collapsible batter bowl. Boom, we're gonna put it in here, add some seasonings. The cool part is when you're done, folds up, throw it in a drawer, dishwasher safe, Brand new product, not even out yet. So let's try it and see how it works. You, we'll hand it over to you. Turn around real quick. Y'all look at that new Blue Gabe merch. What about that? New Blue Gabe cutting boards, but we're still using deer meats because I'm scared to cut on mine. They're too nice. You want some seasoning in there? Yeah. What do you want? A little creole or a little butter or what? garlic. Is it any good? Have you ever tried these? Yeah, I've tried. We come out. So we'll just add whatever flavor you want to it. Let's add just a little creole. Mm. Mm. Just to add a little, wow. Where did my good knife go? See, see what happens when you let other people cook in your kitchen? Things disappear. Is this one it? Right here though. No, that ain't it. If I brought him out deer hunting, we would shoot a deer and then eat some deer. I come down here and go fishing. <laughs> We, we're eating fish, but it was the bait that was intended to catch some other fish with. You got that right. Anytime I'm going to fry lobster, I take it like this, that little membrane, and I skin it off just like I'm oh, flaying nice. a fish. Now all you got is perfect tender meat. I won't waste this. I'll put it in a Ziploc and cook it in a soup later. Oh, like a chowder or a yeah, whisk or something? Anything. Sweet. But when you're frying it, you want it to be super tender. The boys so are, it won't be chewy. Yeah, the boys are in the game room. They're going to be eating. So I'll save all that. All right, so that's all we're doing, cutting it up in just little cubes, just like that. All you do is put the lobster just like that with the lid. Right here, collapsible batter bowl. So now I'm gonna show you how to use it. So that's you take over. on, flip it over. So now all your breading goes from there. Give it a couple shakes, flip it over. Guess what, do you see any coming off the sides? No. Nope. None whatsoever. How slick's that? So now all your batter's down here, so if we want to do the shrimp... We're going to do the shrimp. Right what there. you talking about? Easy peasy. Bring the, <clears throat> bring the shrimps over here. Easy peasy. Sneezing. All right, so we got some of the excess shrimp the boys didn't use. Okay, watch this. Gabe's first time using it. 
What do you think? I like it. It's a lot easier. I sling flour all over the place when I'm doing this. Hey, pretty fancy dancy. Want another plate? No. It's easy. It's bait night. You bait night. Something. You know all of these kids watching YouTube these days, they like Fortnite. We're having bait night. So here's the most important part. This is the mullet. I'm most excited about this. I've been thinking about it. I just cleaned them. They're so tender. I'm thinking you're going to be able to eat the whole thing. Just bones and all. The tail should just be like a potato chip, right? All right, one of my kids' favorite thing to eat is garlic bread. Take a little bit of the butter garlic. I've already lathered butter on there, but I'm sure y'all get the point with that. So the ribs been on about 40 minutes. We added some mushroom. That was Gabe's little touch. So you can see how it's caramelizing. So I'll reduce them down. They're about 10, 15 minutes out. They're gonna be wham. So we're cooking like just a big old fried, whose phone's on? That'd that be sounded, yours. That sounded like mine. Yeah. Why somebody want to text us while we're cooking? Uncle Aubrey, that's who it was. He gets a get out of jail free card. So we're just taking the big chunks of lobster. We should call your parents and invite them for supper. Yeah, okay, you already got me in trouble with that. We'll add some scraps in there too. Anytime you're cooking with a cast iron skillet or frying anything, you always want that grease 350 degrees before you put it in there. If not, it'll cool down and mess everything up. All right, when you're cooking lobster and shrimp, don't overcook it, it doesn't take long. Maybe two minutes at 350 degrees. Three minutes tops, let it get golden brown, and it's about to come out. Really, that quick? That quick, gator tail, 350 degrees for three minutes, done. Oh man, look at that. Ooh, yeah. See how it's thickening up? Almost like a melted caramel. We're getting super close. You don't want to go too long, because then you got a chance of burning it. And then you can see, boom. How easy is that to clean up afterwards? We need to let it go just a little longer. We started at 740, it's 833. So about seven minutes, it's gonna be perfect. Let's throw the mullet in. Let's throw, come on, the mullet in. Bink. <laughs> hey, this. These women. I'm for like, real, you've ate these before. No, I've never ate mullet before. I've I've ate fried mullet. Big shout out Vernon High Note and Teresa High Note in, in uh, Lareda, Florida. They fried some, and I'm telling you right now, I'm like, I'm not eating mullet. I ate the whole plate. But I've never ate little finger mullet like this still on the bone. So them were big mullet. The ones that I ate with them were big West Coast mullet. All right, so the mullet have been in here for exactly three and a half minutes, and they are, oh, so delicious looking. Mm. Mm. It's gonna be good, I can tell you. I can tell you. See, so I know what a lot of people don't realize, especially about my friends around here, is a lot of our fans are all over the world. They're definitely not just here in America and definitely not Florida. I'm sure there's countries that look like mullet is a delicacy. In the sand flea video, that little threadfin herring that that woman caught, in Hawaii, the fish here that we think is just like an average fish, like uh, throw it in away, that fish on the sand flea video in Hawaii, at one point only the royal people, like the hierarchies, yeah. got to eat that fish. So that's pretty neat. So we're eating mullet. I don't care if Mr. Can Cooker says, well, that's weird. Look at that. Hey, shout out if you think eating mullet's weird. Leave a comment below if you think eating mullet is normal or unnormal. I'm gonna get hate for cutting the heads off because half the world eats fish with the heads on. So show them what these ribs looks like. Dump them in this bowl right here. They all fit. And there's your cleanup afterwards. Literally no cleanup. Look at that. Here y'all smell it. You can't smell it. Oh my goodness. I will say those are gonna be bone. We got the garlic bread, we got the lobster. Now I'm gonna bring the kids in the table. We're gonna be eating in a second. Man, it right, smells good. Check out my new hat. You haven't even seen my new hat. Look at her, Art for All does it again. All right, but take it off. We gotta say the blessing. Close your eyes. All right, dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this food. Thank you for allowing Seth and Hunter and Gunner, which one ever, Jake and Luke and 
Little Luke and Kayla and everybody for having a blessed day. Thank you for everything you give us. Thank you for dying on the cross and forgive us of our sins. Amen. 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 I'm trying it first. I'm very skeptical. Oh, gosh, see, they're still burning hot. Very skeptical. Dang them, my crap. Tender. Dad, can I can I eat a fried fish? Like, I'm not yeah, into. Yeah, throw me one on them, bud. I'm not into sugar. One. Oh yeah, this was actually the main deal right here. Let me try the mullet. Thanks, buddy. Look. That's so much better than Sharpie catfish, it's not even funny. Come on. So much better. Now be careful, that middle bone, that little fin bone, just like on a catfish. So this, the tail, Oh yeah. I'm thinking be like a potato chip, in my mind. Never ate mac, what are these? I never ate a Finger mullet. I never ate it. I never ate them all, do So you eat it just like, you, when you Finger bite it, you yeah. gotta be careful that you don't get that middle bone. I'll eat these all day, every day. When I cook them for my mom and dad, they're gonna love them. I'm gonna cook them for Steve Price and for Mike Edwards and G3 Outfitters. Brad, y'all know Brad, he's on all my videos. He's gonna say, I'm not gonna eat mullet. I'm gonna cook these for him and he's gonna love them, I promise you. Y'all check this meal out though. Dad, Snapper, the hog bed. Look, Dad. Like a heavier meal. Are you just gonna hijack the whole plate of food? All right, y'all, I've been out on that boat all day. I'm starving, I'm hungry, I'm ready to eat. I gotta put this camera down. Big shout out to Seth McGinn. I know y'all are probably thinking I ran an infomercial on this cooking second section, but I didn't. Seth came up with the can cooker and the flour shaker and all these awesome seasonings all on his own. He's the first person to back me, the first person to support me. So when he shows up to cook, hey, we're gonna throw it down as many ways as we can with the can cooker supplies. Thanks for all the love, thanks for all the support, thanks for all the positive comments. Hey, thank you for the negative ones. I don't even care about them. Hey, until next time, like Jake Arrington says, we're getting out of what? We're getting out of shape, y'all.